So, local is something I get, keep getting called over and over again, and I'm not from Brighton, and I don't live here. I was born in Uruguay, and I grew up in New York, and I've been in London for 19 years. Um, but I did launch the Brighton Energy, the BESCO. Is anybody here from BESCO? Brighton Energy Hove uh, Collective. And then also Will Cottrell, who set up um, Brighton Energy. And I'm a, I'm a community energy person. And um, I think that we won't change the subject. Um, because I am standing here in front of you, and I want to tell you, I've been to the promised land. Um, I grew up on self-sustaining communities with uh, solar panels, printing press, weavery, bakery. Um, we, you know, we had sheep, we made wool, uh, we had cottage industry, 300 acres, and it was all a uh, workers' cooperative up outside of uh, New York State. Um, and everybody knew what you did, and everybody talked about you and your family and what you're doing. And, and in many ways, it was, you know, it's what everybody wanted when they said, I'm going to go off and be in a collective, I'm going to be in a community. Um, and I think it's important to say, um, yeah, that's not the answer. So if you're thinking about running off to um, setting up a collective outside and getting a couple of 20, you can buy like a whole 20 acres of, of land in, um, in Spain right now or in Italy or Portugal. Pause. <laughs> Just pause. Um, you can do it right here, right now, and it's infinitely better, both for you and for all the collective people who've been working uh, on this project. And it's so funny that you, uh, that our last speaker brought up um, Nick uh, from the um, Pine Ridge because my life has taken me all over the world. But as a native, um, I was born in Uruguay. My grandmother was native uh, Uruguayan Indian. And I came to New York and grew up with Lakota and have spent a lot of time in um, with Winona LaDuke in the White Earth Reservation. And that's actually um, uh, where I, I'd like to start the journey. So um, I, th that's a rooftop in Loughborough uh, with young people who are, grew up and lived there and we put into employment and have solar panels on their rooftop. And what my organization has been doing is saying, I've been to the mountaintop, I've been to the promised land, I, I was eating, uh, grain bread that I had baked with grain that I had grown with a wool jumper that had been knitted for me from, from sheep that I had carted the wool from. I mean, I've been there. And I'm telling you right now, right here, right now, is it. And, um, and building systems that work in this in here are, can be done. And it's been a, a fight of mine for years. I've, I've worked so I, I come to you today, I was yelling at Lord Willits yesterday in Westminster Abbey about how he was full of shit. And, uh, because he was the one who had raised the, 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 taken the cap off of uh, school university goers. Um, and then he was there telling all the most deprived young people, 400 young people that were in there from all over London, that he really believed in their education and their opportunity. And I just had to pull out my phone and be like, you said this at this date, and you said this, and there needs to be accountability. And that's the same thing that the fellow speakers have been saying. We need accountability, we need to be rethinking how the financial model works, but like, it's fiduciary responsibility, having the highest amount of, of return in the shortest amount of time, which has been screwing everything, and you can have reasonable returns over a reasonable amount of time right here and right now. And really what we've been trying to do at Repowering, and we have a, you know, half of us are women, half of us are men. We have equal pay grades. It's a cooperative. You, it's all the, the share capital is locked. It all exists. It's working. You can, we've won the Renewable Energy Awards, Inside Housing Awards, renew, um, uh, top 100 projects by KPMG, like all these things. But it's all about how do you build in the communities where you are. I am not going to be the director of your co-op. It doesn't matter if it's energy co-op or housing co-op, whatever. All we do is we come in and support you to be the managers and directors of that and the delivery agencies. But let's go back to, to uh, Pine Ridge. This was, um, th this, every year, Winona LaDuke, who's the head of the White Earth Reservation, uh, uh, the Ojibwe um, people, uh, she rides uh, against the DAPL, the Dakota Access Pipeline. And there was this whole movement. I went with them over 1,000 miles riding. And it was, it's been this sort of movement of peoples across the world that I wanted to, to share with you, that we're all trying to do this. And I've been 
working around the world with groups like this, and that person in the front there, that is Quentin Liedenfeiter. That is the great-great-grandson of Black Elk. And he was there in tears with me, and we were talking about how do you use local currencies to buy energy assets and to do things, because we did the first community-owned renewable energy project in the world and used local currency, the Brixton Pound, to be able to buy that asset. And, and he, we were working through it, and he said, I've talked to my parents about this. How do we make this happen? Yeah? And this, in, I was in the mountains in Bolivia, uh, having spent uh, six, six months traveling around and working with different communities, talking about how the indigenous communities themselves need to not leave and go to the city, not learn Spanish. Fuck Spanish. You want Aymara, you want Quechuan, you want to eat. You know, we all talk about these amazing things that people have, but actually, what consistently happens is we talk about the fact that somewhere else there's something that you guys aren't in the right place at the right time, that there's a better idea somewhere else. You are in the right place at the right time, and she was in the right place at the right time, and she helped me to paint with her and her whole school this piece that was about how you, that you are Father Sky and Mother Earth, and you are there, and you need to speak the language and eat the food and rejoice in that and not leave your village. And so, what does community energy look like? I could talk to you about solar panels. I have been on the energy market reform uh, policy bills for the UK. I've set up Community Energy England, Community Energy London, EU Energy Consumer Group, but it all means nothing. Communities coming together to generate a revenue stream and cut out the big energy supply companies looks like this, right? People coming together like yourselves to make food, celebrate that, and put them onto all the buildings in their local area. But every single time, it needs a woman. It needs a matriarch. For all the men in the room, I am deeply, deeply honoring the male energy in the room, but I would just like to say, we have nothing compared to the energy of the women that run these co-ops. It's always a woman, and I have been to hundreds of communities across the world, and I work directly with the Rockefeller One Resilient Cities program, and I can tell you that it's about matriarchs. And matriarchs are the ones that help facilitate that. <laughs> Give yourselves that. And, it, and, and as a man, I can say that we have a very important role to play. It's fantastic to be a man. You know, they can make all these jokes about, about men always trying to thrust their way into things and <laughs> leading and all this. Thing. But, but and we have an important role to play, and I want to honor that because many of the men in here, I'm sure, have had no guidance. We're a generation that have not grown up with any sort of male leader, leadership, and we need it. And we're trying to work through being sensitive and being... Um, clear and direct, and I'm, I'm, I want you to understand that that's important discussion to have, but we're not having it today. We're talking about the fact <laughs> that energy co-ops are facilitated consistently by incredible women like Anne Kanai. Anne Kanai is the linchpin. She, was, she ran the pub on that estate. She's lived on that estate for 40 years, and she knows through and through what it takes to make things happen, and if you fuck with Anne, then Anne will fuck with you. The, the, the story goes with, consistently that um, her husband, uh, her, her, her third husband, ha cheated on her, and he somehow jumped off the top of a building. But everybody is consistently believes that actually Anne helped facilitate him leaving the situation. <laughs> and this is, and, and I, say that, I say that as a joke because she jokes about it. But in the, re in the reality of the fact is that she has always been there. And every young person, she, when, the, when the funding stopped for young, um, young people, they live in, this is in Brixton, um, I'm sorry, this is in Hackney, in the Bannister House Estate, on the Hummerton High Road, which was coined the Hummer side, because it had the highest levels of stabbings. And I have personally had uh, three young people that I've worked with in our paid accredited training who passed away. And she has seen over 15 young people killed that she's worked with in, through gang violence and through other things. But she knows the young people, she also knows the people who are in need. And because she did, working with her around food, um, we were able to build an energy cooperative that was able to reach both the people who were most in need, um, whether they were elderly or infirmed, and the young people who have no way into society. They don't need a way off of their estates, they don't need to go somewhere else, they don't need to get a chance to go to Oxford, they don't want to. They want to go and live in their communities and be there and be respected for who they are. And that was something that I had to learn about as well. Um, and so, I mean, from my perspective, um, that's my grandmother and my great-grandmother, and that's where they lived in that mud hut. And that Che Guevara and Fidel Castro came to that hut because they were part of the Socialist Party in Uruguay all those years ago. And so matriarchs run tr through and through. And 
in me, but all I can say is what I do on a day-to-day -day basis is, tell, is bring this narrative both to them to say, you don't have to go anywhere, and I'm going to bring it to you and say you don't have to go anywhere because the people in your communities are there already. They're usually between the age of 40 and 74. They're usually a woman. Um, and they are, if you look at most forests, they're like, they're, they're the big mother tree and they hold the ability to push chemistry around. They can take carbon or water and they use the mycology, the, the mushrooms in the ground, to do that. If you cut down 90% of the forest and you leave these trees, it will come back and it will seed it and it will know where to push the nitrogen and nutrients that it needs. And these incredible women have been able to do that in nine cooperatives that I've built across London with an incredible team, which I am proud to know that it's a cooperative model. So how does that work? We do paid accredited youth training programs for young people, so they're AQA accredited, they're paid at a London living wage, and because they lived on that estate, they're able to, to talk to people in a way that the council can't and in a way that a private company cannot. We run schools programs um, uh, for young people around how do you get engaged with things? How do you dance? How do you dance energy? How do you draw it? How do you paint it? How do you live a reality that you want to see? Art, music, and dance is not some piddly thing on the side. It is the crux of what we're trying to do. Our civilization, our society, has we talked about finance and energy and the sort of Maslowian base fundamentals, when actually it's about art, music, and dance. And how can we then creatively talk to one another in family? And so you, the only way to do that is to be local to where you are. It's great to think about esoteric great ideas, but to be clear, that if you are working on a project and it's important to you, then you can come up and you can draw using Play-Doh, <laughs> using painting. You can come up with the ideas and the vision that you want to see in the world. And when you cook the food, don't, I'm not saying this, the catering wasn't fantastic here. I'm just saying if you're doing something in your local area, don't go to these caterers because they were fantastic. Go to your group or even say, we're going to get together and, and make that happen. And that's what we've done in any one of the co-ops we've worked on. We say, who loves cooking? Okay, you do it. How can we, much can we put in? Oh, I can put in five or I can put in 10. And each time we come together for that week, we made the food. And for any bigger events, we would try to, to double down on that and say, are you able to cook? Should we all come together to cook? So that even the way in which the food that's presented doesn't exclude people, it includes people. When we installed solar panels, it's about the paid accredited training it includes finance, IT, technical, legal, media, and marketing. They learn that every business, regardless of energy or whatever, has all the necessary parts that they need to learn about to, to become successful in whatever they go on to do. So they help, this is Habiba Hajo, who was actually born in this building, uh, grew up there, and is now studying engineering at University College London. Um, <coughs> Kamal Kaldir, who, um, whose mother it was in the building behind this um, on, the, on the Rupa Park estate, whose little brother was uh, has, is, um, lame and his mom is unwell, and he really didn't have very many options to do things, but by giving him this opportunity, he loved it. He said, I don't want to install solar panels. I really love car clubs. And doing the videos and the advertising for the the project, he has gone on to make a, a very successful company doing that. Um, so I guess where what I wanted to sort of give you is tangible examples. We've set up Brixton Energy, Solar One, Two, Three, um, North Kensington Community Energy, right around Grenfell. We did a whole community energy project on social housing. Um, uh, Voxel Energy is on the whole Voxel estate. Bannister House in Homerton. Lambeth Community Solar is open right now. It's just, I think, raised about 140000 to do solar on schools. And <coughs> Energy Garden is the, new, is, is the new version of community energy, which I'll talk to you a little bit about now. Um, but I, I guess the tangible thing is that while winning all these awards over the last few years, I've come to say that I really feel we, that the journey is difficult. And, and it promises many struggles. This, the, the idea that we can make it and there's all these really fantastic new models of communicating is, is real. And as someone who's worked on policy inside Whitehall as well as 
um, trying to deliver stuff. I've had three legal injunctions put on me. One was not allowed to go on any more rooftops in Lambeth. One was not allowed to plant vegetables on the overground. Uh, and the third one I can't even talk about. But effectively, because <laughs> I'm basically, I've been trying to guerrilla garden or guerrilla solar. At, at, like, so, like, and, and I actually set it out. And someone came back to me from, uh, from uh, who runs a, um, a security outfit for the national government. And they said, um, in 2011, um, when there was those first not Extinction Rebellion, pre-Extinction Rebellion, there was the, they were trying to come out and sort of get everyone to stop um, and to go against the banks. Um, it was the 99% thing. And I went to and I gave a talk and I said, forget all the talking. Don't be, don't be in these, these little tents over in bank. Go into the street, rip up the paving stones, and plant a garden in the middle of the road. Literally just get a jackhammer, you can rent them for the day from uh, HS Hire, and put in a bunch of potatoes, and then put some solar panels across it and power your, that will get you going. I got a phone call and they said, you have now been put on a special list that we have to surveil and see you guys. <laughs> now that is, what I'm saying to you is that that is true anarchy, it's true revolution, because talking about saying stop, and, and, and I deeply respect everybody right now who's willing to put themselves on the line, but if you want to put yourself on the line, literally, get the jackhammer out. Because that is a whole other way of starting to talk about things. And I have just done this to the banking sector. I've spent the last four years working on a new financial instrument, which we had quadruple checked by all these lawyers. And it cost me hundreds of thousands of pounds to do it. Um, and I don't, I, you know, it, it, was, it, it was a pumpkin. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was about how do you communicate to the financial sectors that these community-owned renewable energy projects are investable, that a, f that a reasonable return over a reasonable amount of time is acceptable, um, that, that, that having social well-being is financially viable and has gains for those communities, that growing home in our communities is, has a financial instrument. So I said, all right, let's build a 100 million pound bond because all these community energy projects, the, the, the investment community does not feel that they can look at because these guys, to assess whether they can give you their money, can't get out of bed for less than 70 grand. I, I can get out of bed for less than 70 grand. But the, I had to explain to them why. And so in this case, the idea was that we would come together. We won. I, I submitted this idea to the People's Postcode Lottery. We won about 700,000 pounds to start a massive co-op. So where we put in hundreds of square meters of uh, green space and grow a different reality. Um, and the idea has started. And we brought all these people together from Bank of America to, to 100, Rockefeller's 100 resident cities, FX, Metro Bank, Co-op Bank, everyone together. said, look, I need a new system. How can we do it? I said, look, if what we're going to do is we're going to have like a, the largest emitter of emissions in the UK, the sector, is transport. If we can directly address that, then we can have a huge impact. There's 2.4 billion passenger journeys a day on the London Overground. And, there, and, it, and it's the biggest single energy consumer. If we can generate the energy that we need for them, so by putting solar on top of their rooftops, um, and then do youth training programs, schools programs, put in bat huts, swift nests, beehives, then we can have a financial return. And I said, uh, if I can do this, right, if I can commodify social and environmental outcomes for you guys, will you invest? And, um, uh, they said, they said yes, um, uh, but then we went back and forth for three, four years, and um, and I said, well, you can get involved, you can give us assets, you can give us energy, you can, we can allow you to do a, a you can help pay for these youth training programs, whatever it is, um, but uh, the one slide that I was thinking was right there um, said it was a social return on investment. Um, which basically they couldn't understand that a 4% return would be applicable and that would be enough. So we did a social return on investment by three different universities. One of them was uh, Imperial College and they found that for every one pound invested into this project, there's 11 pounds 37 that come out um, from sense of well-being, sense of place, sense of belonging uh, and uh, inclusion. 
And one of the biggest problems that we've found consistently with urban areas is that people feel excluded from society. I know that most young people are feeling excluded from their own future, and most of you are feeling excluded from the present. So if we can come together on this and show that our community projects have straight tangible benefits, then we can then share that with the investment community, and it does exist. So I would, enc I would encourage you guys all to check out, um, uh, to get involved uh, with, with both Energy Garden, which is, which is open for you guys to look at, but then also to check out Repowering for all the opportunities that are there, because the future is here, it's now. You are exactly in the right place at the right time, and you don't need to go anywhere else. Start in your local community, and we'd love to help you do it.